Ask anyone what they want out of life, and most people will tell you, hey, I just want to be happy. Now, we may all differ on exactly how to get there, but as a general rule, good things are better than bad things. Today on Tabletop, Michelle Boyd, Megan Camarina, and Amber Benson are here to spend time in a slightly different world, where the more miserable you are, the better things are actually going for you. And the very worst thing you can do for a friend is bring them joy. I hope you have a morbid sense of humor, because we are about to play an award-winning card game called Gloom. is a darkly comic American-style card game. Each player controls the fate of an eccentric band of misanthropes like Hemlock Hall or Dark's Den of Deformity. The goal of the game is to make your family as miserable as possible while making your rivals' families as happy as you can. You do this by playing three different types of cards on a turn. The most common kind of card is a modifier card. These have negative points to play on your own family, this is good for you, or positive modifier points that you will play on a rival's family, this is bad for them. You can also play these event cards that let you do special things like cancel actions. And then finally you can play untimely death cards on any character who has a negative self-worth. That character is taken out of the game and scores points for the player who controls it. The scoring is sort of like golf. The player who is the most unhappy and has the lowest score is the winner. When an entire family has shuffled off this mortal coil, we will total up the points on the dearly departed and the family with the lowest self-worth wins. So that's how we play Gloom. But what makes Gloom awesome is the stories we will weave to justify everything that happens on a modifier card. And we have got some great storytellers here today. Which family will be the most miserable? Which family will dance a dance of delight underneath the maypole? Well, we are about to find out, because it is time to play Gloom. My name is Amber Benson, and I am an actor, and a writer, and a director, and uh, an occultist on the side. My name is Megan Camarina, also known as Strawberry17 on YouTube, and I make really fun, creative music videos. My name is Michelle Boyd. Uh, I'm an actress. I'm mostly known for web work. I was Riley in the guilds, and ever since I've been doing stuff on my own with Team Unicorn. Amber, you will go first. <laughs> All right, Gloom. have the Blackwater clan. There's the old uh, dam, the murderous matriarch. Uh, you got Angel, the starry-eyed serial killer. Right. And then you've got Balthazar, the unfaithful hound. And uh, Cousin Mordecai, the red-headed stepchild. All right, well, I, I was I was feeling kind of sorry for Cousin Mordecai because yeah. um, <laughs> uh, he, he actually... Uh, it's from Massachusetts, cousin yeah. Mordecai. Yeah. And in Massachusetts, um, you can uh, you can be married if you're a same sex couple, right? Right, right. So he went through this beautiful like ceremony where he married his his partner, and um, right as they were saying the uh, the final uh, I do's, uh, he was widowed at the wedding. Oh, wow, that's so sad. <laughs> that's so terrible wow, for that cousin sucks. Mordecai. Poor cousin Mordecai, and, and, and you have a second act. I, I do. Um, so, uh, uh, poor Angel, who is a starry-eyed serial killer, she um, she was always looking for somebody. You know, yeah. she she was very very resentful of cousin Mordecai and his widowedness. <laughs> so, so she was always looking, and she just never found Mister Wright. So she uh, she grew old without grace. Oh, that's oh, terrible. No, yeah, that's... it's really piteous. I'm, I'm like new to this whole thing, but I'm very much enjoying it. All right, well, here you go. Here's two cards for you. Draw back very up your much. hand limit. And Megan, you're up. Okay. Well, uh, my family is the Smythes. We have the butler, 
um, Mr. Butterfield. We also have Lord Wellington Smythe. He's the Duke. We have the wild child Lola and the twins. So, so like I said, we have, we have the twins who um, go to this really interesting school. This school is like a special school, and only midgets go there. And every single day they go there, and they're, they're, they're mocked by midgets. And they're not midgets, they just... Oh, sad for them. I don't really know anyone at the table. This is kind of an interesting experience. I'm a little freaked out, I'm not going to lie. I have the Slogars, led by the matriarch Professor Helena Slogar, Melissa Slogar, Lord Slogar, and Grogar, the lovable teddy bear scamp. Um, I did hear about your twins and uh, their misfortune at school and being made fun of by midgets. Uh, yes. Did you know that they really had uh, their own way of getting through school? They decided to become very clever at cards oh. and make a little bit of money that way. Wow. Uh, it, it helped them you know, get through their day with that extra pocket change. Now, however, my family, I'm so sorry, uh, especially the little girl, Melissa, her father decided to write her out of the will. Oh, no. I know. I don't know how she's going to come back from this. Wait, I'm supposed to have a strategy? Crap. My strategy so far is just to try to figure out how best to kill off my own characters as quickly as possible before someone has a chance to give them a better day. Well, um, I am the uh, traveling uh, circus family. Uh, led by the sinister ringmaster Darius Stark. We have, of course, Thumbelisa, the diminutive diva, uh, Samson O'Toole, the bearded man, and uh, Elisande Deville, the illustrated lady. We're not a very good circus, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> the key to winning gloom is to get negative self-worth on your guys and kill them right away. The saddest, saddest uh, person uh, that we have in our family is, of course, Samson O'Toole. He's a bearded man, and Samson knows that... Bearded men just aren't as big of a deal as bearded ladies. So after a particularly bad performance uh, where a child shouted out, that's just a man with a beard, <clears throat> um, he, uh, he uh, went to the bar and was ruined by rum. Oh. The circus is struggling financially because they have a bearded man and a tattooed lady. It should be the other way around. The circus isn't doing well because they're stupid. I remember hearing uh, a story all about her when, uh, when she was uh, written out of the will. Uh, she uh, w took herself to the same bar uh, where Samson was, was sitting. Samson took pity on her because she told him his sob story about how she had been written out of the will. So Samson, uh, seeing how the rum was numbing all of his everything, thought that he would help her out, so she was diverted by drink. Oh. And I will draw two cards, and that's the end of my turn. Balthazar. He just, lots of bad things happened to him. He was out on the moors one day where he likes to go. Like, the moors of Massachusetts? A, yeah, the moors of Massachusetts. <laughs> yes, of course, I've been there. They're, they're beautiful. <laughs> That's a Mordecai, they're you know, he's somewhere beautiful. else. I love that Amber has invented the moors of Massachusetts. That's clearly where all the families live. It's where the circus is going. So he was out on the moors, and uh, he was minding his own business, and uh, he was chased by children. Oh <laughs> no! Did they tie cans to his tail to scare him? They uh, they were really mean to him. They like they cut his tail off actually. <gasps> wow! Oh my gosh. Children are dicks. They are they are devious and mean. Well, I think Will knows it a little bit better than the rest of us, and he's very very smart and wise. But uh, I wouldn't discount Megan or Michelle. They look really cute and adorable, and they're not. They're like evil on the inside. So the twins they decided, you know what? We're gonna go see the circus because you may not believe it. But they're a fan of bearded men. They're like, what? yeah, they really like you too. So, wow. so they take the train and they're headed to the circus to see the bearded man, and um, they were trapped on the train. Oh no! Yeah, really. Yeah, I heard about her getting cut out of the will, and that's that's very very unfortunate. But I also it's heard it's not as unfortunate as the dog getting his tail cut off. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, that is I mean, really... it's just you know, I feel as bad days go. <laughs> yeah. But this is what I this is what I heard through the grapevine that um, after she got done drinking. She realized, you know what, I don't really want to be in that will anyways, because all he's leaving me is cheese, and um, she is lactose intolerant. 
Oh, so, no. Yeah. And so she went to bed, and she's like, I- I'm going to sleep without clothes. I feel way better about my life. Megan and I got off to a rough start. We just kind of had this, like, secret competition going back and forth. We actually met earlier um, today for the very first time at a mutual friend's birthday party. I was eating lunch next to Michelle, and I didn't even know she was uh, the person I was going to be playing against tonight. I brought out the game. She's like, have you guys ever played this? She's like... Are you shooting with Will later? And instantly I knew, I'm like, this is going to be my competition to knock her out right away. So you're up to, okay, good. Guys, I have some sad news. <sighs> Samson O'Toole was in the bar. He felt worse and worse and worse about himself, especially when he found out that the two young twins who had been coming <laughs> to the circus to see just him were trapped on the train. He was so just distraught by this that he drank too much rye and died. No! That's true. Now, the bearded man just was so upset that the twins were held up by the train. Instead of waiting a day for them to show up, he got the 11-year-old drunk so she'd feel good about herself and then drank himself to death. Role models. Well... They'll... Things seem to be going very badly for your family. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the old dam, she's just... It's been really tough for her, you know, being ostracized by the church. She went a little crazy, actually. And uh, she started, uh, uh, like, collecting school children and doing naughty things to them. Wow. Like, leaving them in, in the basement for hours response. on end and not yeah. giving them food. And It's a bit she of just, an extreme response, I think. Yeah, yeah, and then she tried to, you know, she tried to sell them to the circus, but of course, you know... Well, the circus is having some financial difficulties right now. Thanks so much for bringing that up. Yeah, so she started a fire and she burnt them all to the ground in the house. Wow. And so for this, all the parents came together and were very irate and upset about their dead children. So they uh, they burnt her. Wow. She was burnt by a mob for murdering all those really nice children in her basement. I've never heard something so morbid in my whole entire life. Uh, I think a little piece of me died inside. I did not expect Amber to go to such an incredibly dark place. And I'm actually kind of glad to be sitting around the corner of the table from her. I'm going to have a cry after this. Sad thing about the twins, being trapped on the train, uh, it's not going anywhere, and uh, it just got way worse, because someone tried to go out through the emergency exit up at the top of the train, and they were in the forest, and by uh, lifting up the hatch, it let in a wasp nest. Oh, yes. no. So they were wounded by a bunch of wasps. Wow. Oh, yeah. no. It's, it was, it was a way to the wondrous circus. Yeah, yeah this, just their terrible. day just keeps getting worse. Yeah. And I have to tell you, it's not a very good circus. <laughs> They're going to be very disappointed when they finally get there. Well, their the hero is already dead. I think playing Gloom is um, a very interesting way to get to know uh, all the people that you're playing with. I mean, whether or not you want to continue dating the person or um, move in with them or if they need therapy. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Amber. <laughs> Your family. We felt really bad for them, uh, especially after the untimely death. Oh, that's very, <laughs> that's very kind. Man. We're, we're, listen, we, we darks, we like to keep to ourselves. Which, which we do appreciate, but at the same time, we felt like you really needed to be a little bit more involved in the community and uh, kind of play a really popular part in Parliament. Oh, no. <laughs> we're popular in Parliament. <laughs> Well, look at that. Somebody clearly took some pity on Darius Dark. Exactly. Because his creditor problem has gone away. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Darius Dark was feeling good about himself. His creditor problems had been solved. How wonderful. He, he, uh, he was popular in Parliament. He was whistling a jaunty tune of happy, joyful celebration. And he walked right into a teeming mass of porcupines that had escaped from the nearby Porcupine racetrack. Mm-hmm. And, yes, and he, right was, pier- he was pierced by porcupines. Oh. And Amber, it is your turn. Oh, thank you. Uh, the twins, <laughs> when they got on that train and bad things happened to them and wasps, you know, stung them and stuff, they ended up in the hospital before they could get to the circus. And I got to tell you, the people in town kind of fell in love with them. They're delightful children. They're delightful children. Yes. And uh, they kind of became the toast of the town. Ah, how wonderful for them. Oh, oh that's great. I, I think it was a shame that the Grand Dam didn't burn the twins along with her in the basement and could gotten rid of both of them right at the same time. So, uh, hearing that the twins were in the hospital, the sister, Lola, is like, you know what, I gotta, 
I gotta get my act together. And uh, she gets up off the floor and she's like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see them. And she's kind of in like a daze because she's still a little bit drugged up. And um, <laughs> she's allergic to grass too, so she's all hivey. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and she walks right into the road and gets hit by a car. Oh, oh no, how sad for her. I know. People drive like maniacs on the moors of they Massachusetts. Do. They do. They're just mass holes. It's not, not a safe. The, the mass holes are worse. Just gonna be moors, moors, moors. Yep. The moors of Massachusetts. Oh, well, uh, the, the twins, they're they, they get out of the hospital, they're doing <laughs> a lot better now you know and everyone loves them so they have this like ego thing going on where they're like uh, signing babies foreheads and they're just walking on the street like yeah. like people are throwing coins at them and stuff like that the one thing that they didn't know with all this new attention that the beggars hated them because mm. you know the coins that they're getting thrown at usually the beggars get those coins so uh, they were beaten by beggars oh, no. <laughs> and they got they got what was coming to them and yet it seems they're having a perfectly neutral day yeah. <laughs> My own professor Helena is always very concerned for her own daughter. Yeah. And the news of these twins gaining the town's favor, even with uh, being stung by the wasps. As bad as that was, uh, really just sort of drove her to despair. And she died. Oh! No. I know. She, she never thought that her own daughter would aspire to such heights in the community as the twins. One down, still three to go. Awesome. Little Melissa is left motherless now, with mm. only a brain for a father. Yeah. But she's doing okay. Yeah, she, she's got that teddy bear. You know, she was doing okay. You'd think oh, that about no. her. You'd no. think she was doing okay. <laughs> Uh, in fact, she was feeling so okay that she thought she would go to the circus. Everyone loves everyone, the circus. Everyone loves the circus. Yes. And she yes. thought it would cheer her up even more and continue on her streak. However, even though your circus was lacking in a bearded lady and now lacking in a bearded man, yeah. it had tons and tons of mice running around. Oh, no. And my little girl was menaced by mice. Uh. Darius, kind of Darius Stark was was warned by the Massachusetts Moore's mouser that he <laughs> yeah. should not put mice mm -hmm. in his menagerie, and uh, as it turns out, he is not a good listener. No, he's not you a good listener. You are a maestro of alliteration over there. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, there was a lot of alliteration in this game, and I, I have to say, well, kind of kicked my butt on the alliteration. He's very good at that. Cousin Mordecai actually got some weird boil infestation. That went directly into his heart, Ooh. his broken heart, Ooh. that was broken when he was widowed at the wedding. And all that disgusting fetid boil juice <laughs> filled up his heart and it repaired his broken heart as it killed him. No. And he oh. died without care. Whoa! Wow! Okay, I gotta process for a moment. All right. Meanwhile, mm. Back at the circus grounds, there are now mice running all over the tent. A muck, you might say. They are running a muck and menacing mm. mice. And Darius Stark went to a uh, mouse maven mm -hmm. and said, Marianne, mouse maven, how can I move these mice from my circus? And she said, snakes. Snakes eat mice. So Darius went to the snakesmith. And he purchased uh, 77 snakes. <laughs> and he put those 77 snakes into the circus tent. And uh, what, what he unfortunately did not know was that Thumbelisa, <gasps> she's such a wee thing, was actually riding on mouseback around, around the ring, main ring of the circus. Oh. And <clears throat> uh, when the snakes came up, she was startled by snakes. Oh. Whoa. And, and was put into a terrible fright. Yeah. She is not having a good day. Poor, poor angel. She was into cheese and a bunch of the, the mice caught wind of, of the, the cheese. cheese. <gasps> and they started oh, chasing no. her. She was running up and down the Massachusetts moors being chased by mice. Yes. And um, she was torn limb from limb for <gasps> her cheese. And she died. Ah! And that's the end of Angel. Three down. <laughs> Only one hound left.
Amber only has one of her family members alive. It's the stupid dog that just never dies. And I'm, I'm really afraid of Amber's uh, gameplay because she seems very just reckless. Yeah. Poor, Poor Angel. Angel. That's terrible. Poor Angel. But Darius Dark, <laughs> he just... He just keeps having these, like, money-like windfalls. And the Blackwater clan, like, you know, there's a lot of death going on here. And yeah. they uh, they wanted to to leave some of their, their legacy to uh, to Darius for all the years of fun and, and childish whimsy they've had at the circus, uh, even without a bearded lady. They don't need to do that. That's yeah. fair. But as but I said before, to, uh, we, yeah, we they're gonna Yeah, they're going to do this. Oh. Yeah, it's, they're done. They did that. Aww. It's done. <laughs> he landed a legacy. <laughs> What's happening over there in your land? Uh, well, the twins, you know, they're on their way home after just leaving the hospital. So as they're trekking along, they start getting really thirsty, and they see this stream where the snow had melted a little bit, and they take some of the water to refresh themselves and, you know, get going. But unfortunately, the, the rats, or not the rats, I'm sorry, the mice had, you know, infested that area, peed a whole bunch in that little... Oh, <laughs> oh very rude of the rats. Do. I mean, yeah. mice. Mice, mice, yeah. <laughs> and I think they've evolved now. <laughs> so into rats is what ends really? up happening. Wow. It's, it's, it's their evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Evolution, mice to rats. So yeah. um, the twins, uh, they were distressed by... I'm sorry, did the mice mutate from the moors <laughs> of Massachusetts? Uh, I think it's more like of an evolution. More than likely. Okay, all right, all right. I'm just... My bad. Will is a really fun player. He kind of takes that whole alliteration part of the game and just runs with it. So uh, the twins were distressed by dysentery. Oh, no. <laughs> the twins were a little bit easier to kind of build the story off of, and I didn't have great cards to bring the other two family members into the storyline, but I decided just to focus on the children. Really, everything has just happened to the females of this family so far. I don't know why I'm so fixated on the females, however. Yes, fancy that. <laughs> fancy your female fixation. I know. I'm fond of your female fixation. I can't think of anything else. Would you, would you like to continue? I'm finished. <laughs> Grogar, when he heard about his affianced bride uh, being menaced by the mice yeah. that had since mutated into rats, mm. yeah. I mean, my God, he had to wander into the bar and was driven to drink. Oh, right. He's an, he's an alcoholic bear now. Yeah. It's terrible. Michelle is a good player, but I think she's got it a little over her head. With practice, she will get to be a better player. <laughs> she's going to hit me later. <laughs> Do you all remember when Thumbelisa was startled by snakes? Mm -hmm. I do. And the snakes had been sent into the tent to uh, deal with the marauding mice. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to get rid of all of the snakes, it was determined that the snake's natural predator should be released also into the tent. And everyone knows that bears hate snakes. Often heard that. The bears were released into the, uh, the tent they ran around, and it turns out that it's actually not bears and snakes, but it's bears and thumb-sized ballerinas. No! And she was eaten by bears. Poor oh, Thumbelisa. Thumbelisa. I knew you It's so sad for you. Awful things that happened to um, Alessandra. She she was feeling kind of sorry for herself and sort of blue, and so then she ended up going over to the lake and sort of hanging out there. And there was like a beautiful gondola, and she got in it. And there was a uh, gondolier from from Venice who was on a work study program, and uh, she fell in love. She found <laughs> love on the lake with a gondolier from Venice. Wow. My, my. Who was quite a bit younger than her, I do have to say. Really? Mm. Well, he was on work study, you know. Well, so I done, get it. Yeah. Sandra. Wow, way to go. <laughs> wow, really? Wow, that's way to go. Oh, boy. I really liked that story, and, uh, and I, I particularly liked the look of horror on Will's face when I played the card. The twins. They were the twins. They were going to get better, and their time, their time was up. So the rats ate away at them, and, and they died. This is where it gets crazy. The rats mutated. <laughs> Again? Into yeah. mice? No, backwards. <laughs> Into weasels. Oh, Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
I'm not for sure what happened, but they're, it's weasels. Rats mutate into weasels? If you ever go visit the majestic moors of Massachusetts, stay out of the water. I didn't read that they were killed by weasels, so I just had to jump back to that, the mice evolving into rats and then evolving into weasels. Because, I mean, it could happen. You don't know what was in that piss-filled stream. So I have this card. I can play two more cards, mm-hmm. I believe. So I have Unless this. Unless it's canceled. Oh. What I was trying to do was uh, put down a card where it let me do two other moves because I had some crappy cards I wanted to get rid of, and Michelle just cut me off. That girl gave me a look that I'm amazed I didn't drop dead on the spot. There was pretty much a planning to take me down, I think, from that very moment. Well, I guess it's canceled, so... <laughs> so, Michelle's a dirty jerk. I mean, she's probably nice, but that move was, was very jerk-like of her. Alessandra was delighted to have found love by the lake. <laughs> she went skipping along the shore... Singing, tra la 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 la. <laughs> I found love on the lake. Happy is what I am. Look at there's a rock. Ow, I fell and broke many bones. No! Right. I'm sure you all know that. You all remember that popular song. It was oh, a big hit. Yeah. It was in the 20s, I think. It's Alessandra, it seems, is only <laughs> mildly upset. She has a hunchback on her leg. She does. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is a very, yeah. very rare condition. And yeah. did you know that that kind of bone disease can travel to somebody's heart? What? And actually spread through out their lungs and asphyxiate them. <gasps> oh no! Even while she's only mildly unhappy. Oh no! I know. It's so <laughs> sad. That's awful. If Amber puts her dog down, she is absolutely going to win. There's nothing personal, but I need Darius Dark to die. This is just so sad. I mean, I don't know if I should even tell you what happened, but Darius Dark knew the story of Alessandra finding love at the lake. So he took his new bride Mm. to the same lake. And a monstrous manatee had made its way into the lake. And Darius was mauled (laughs) by that very same manatee. If I can get a death card in my hand, I can kill Darius Dark, and I have more than enough points in front of me to win. What I'm going to do is... um going to come over here to my little friend Balthazar and tell you about him a little bit. Um, yeah. He was just sad because everybody else was dead. And I hate to do this to you folks. He, uh, yeah, he died. <gasps> Old and alone. Oh, no. Yeah. Old, alone, and done for. <clears throat> They're all dead. That's the end. Well, with that, <laughs> I guess we find out who has the most miserable family. Yeah. So we total the points it's of our dead. dead family members. Um, let's see, Amber, how many points do you have? 55, 65, 70. Okay, you have 70 points. Okay. Okay, I have 65, 75. Uh, no, 70. No, 70. 70. We're, we're tied. tied. We're tied. We're tied. All right, all right. Okay. We're okay. currently tied. How many <laughs> points do you have, Megan? I have 70. Uh, you what? do not. I was about to get on you about your beard, <laughs> having extra powers, and that's why you beat us. But I think. Uh, How many points do you have? Oh, 45. This is never. A three-way win. This has never happened before. I'm finally in a three-way. <laughs> Michelle. I'm so sorry. You get the loser's couch all to yourself. It's nice. You can stretch out on it. It'll be nice. No, it'll be good. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can drown your sorrows. Mm. Um, oh, why didn't you say so? Yeah, well, that's what the couch is for. Megan, Amber. Well done. We're going downstairs to feel like winners. Together. Yay! You know, statistically, uh, you are unique. It's, It's incredibly rare that there would be three winners in a game like this. I'm going to go downstairs and talk to myself about winning. Thanks. Turn off the lights when you leave. Wow, you guys. The three of you sharing this three-way victory. I, I know that <laughs> there's, there's just nothing that is really more special than a three-way victory. Um, three-way... Victories are, are, are rare, they don't happen, you know, very often. And uh, I just want to tell you how, how happy I am to stand here and, 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 and enjoy your three-way victory. I feel so good about this three-way. Yeah. I feel good. 
Well, let me give you the official tabletop three-way trophy of awesome. So I'd like to thank my mom and um, everyone who believed in me and Michelle. Uh, wait, it, no, I'm not gonna thank her. I was gonna say we were gonna dedicate it to Michelle. We oh. were, but then the cards they spoke for themselves. Right, right, Will. Yeah, Will, Will agrees with everything. Yes, I'm especially <laughs> proud of my masterful <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's he engineered. Very yeah, he engineered the three-way. Quite honestly, he was. No, quit cock blocking me, dude. All right, so I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, but I have to actually take the trophy with me because, as it turns out, we don't actually have enough money in the budget to buy a trophy for everyone. Uh, but you do get to keep this piece of tape. So you got that Wait, going no, for you. Wait, no, you gotta split it. Oh, it's on my hair. Into Ooh. in three ways. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Three-way right. split this winning tape. One for you. One for. I know you don't want to wear it, but you, you, you're gonna have to. Sorry. You get the way. <laughs> I get three. I'm gonna frame this. <laughs> you get nothing. <laughs> can you feel the excitement? <laughs> I know I can. We will see you next time on Tabletop. And you guys exit, which we forgot oh. to tell you about. My bad. <laughs> <laughs>